Have you ever felt in your gut that you shouldn't be with a man, but you're not exactly sure why? Does it feel like you're only able to see the signs of why you should have left him after the relationship already falls apart? It's time you end this guessing game, which is why on today's show, we're going to be discussing seven signs you should leave him. That way you can finally stop wasting your time, not knowing if this is the guy you should continue to be with. Right away with number one, he can't keep his word. Obviously, people make mistakes. Obviously, not everything he says is going to 100% fall through exactly how he says it's going to fall through. But I do want you to understand there's something to be said for being able to be with the man that can keep his word on things, even if he can't promise you anything large. Because one of the worst positions for you to be in as a woman is for you to be with a man where all he does is promise you a whole bunch of big things and big possibilities only for you to realize after a couple days and a couple weeks that that time never comes. So you're in a vicious cycle of constantly looking forward to a future that never presents itself, but you never actually walk away from the relationship because you're constantly in hope that the relationship will turn into your idea of what it could be like. So for example, if he does things like constantly tells you, hey, uh, by the way, I'm going to call you tonight at 9 p.m. Then 9 p.m. comes and you're like looking at the phone. You're like, it's, it's 8.59. <laughs> He's got 30 more seconds. And then 9 p.m. comes and you're staring at the phone. You're just waiting for him to call. You're like this. And then it's 9.01 and then 9.02. And then you're texting him saying, wait, what are you doing? I thought you said that you were going to call me at 9 p.m. And he doesn't even answer you until the next day comes and he lets you know, yeah, my bad. You know, I know I said that I was going to call you at 9 p.m., but, you know, I had a thing. And if you're constantly finding yourself in a situation where a guy that you're with or talking to can't even keep his word on small things, how are you supposed to expect him to keep his word on something like I'm going to be committed to you for the rest of this relationship? Now, this is the smart thing. If he knows that he's not going to be able to call you at 9 p.m., then a mature man will let you know, hey, I want to call you at 9 p.m., However, I got this and this going on, so I might not be able to and make you aware of that because the reality of it is no matter how busy you are, if you made someone a promise, you're going to have to address that. You don't just not show up to work and don't say anything. At the very least, you call in sick, right? Not every man is mature enough to understand the importance of being able to keep your word, especially in their relationship. Number two is too much heavy freak talk, especially for those of you who are in the beginning stages. If you're noticing that leading up to this relationship that all you keep hearing is freak talk and every time you try to bring up any sort of topic outside of freak talk, he literally reverts the conversation back to freak talk. That speaks to his mindset and where his focus is at. So if that's all he can think about when it comes to you, then that should tell you that's probably all he's there for. Your relationship is supposed to consist of more than just getting freaky. For some of you, you actually end up in a relationship with a guy who's only horned up around you and he literally wants nothing to do with you outside of that. The problem with that is after a couple of months, that horned upness that he once had for you dwindles away because sleeping with you is no longer new and shiny. It's now mundane and old. If you're noticing, for example, you're talking to a guy and you send him a reel about a girl doing pottery and you're like, damn, look at that sculpture. She literally made that sculpture from scratch. Isn't that crazy? And he's like, didn't you see how she two handed that piece of clay? And you're just like, what? That's crazy. That's exactly how you should be two handed me. And you're like, it's, it's literally a piece of clay. It's, she's literally doing pottery. This has nothing to do with the bedroom. And you need to be thinking to yourself, Yes, it's great that, you know, you like to get freaky and you desire me a lot and you want me a lot. But then you also have to be thinking to yourself, is our relationship consisting of any other aspect other than the bedroom? If that's all he sees the value in you of, then God forbid there's ever a situation where you're emotional. What, what happens then? So that's part of the signs you should be looking at and looking for to analyze to yourself what is my relationship with you outside of just sleeping with you? If there's really no substance to our relationship, then I know you're probably here for the wrong reasons. And I also know that this isn't going to last very long. Number three sign that you should leave a man. Get your ears perked up and start listening now. You are in love with his potential. I didn't say you're in love with the actual him. I didn't say you're in love with even experiences that you've had with him in the past. So when you meet a guy and you say to yourself, 
Damn, you're not what I'm looking for right now. But if I could just mold you and adjust you and massage you, I know I could change your mind and get you to be someone that's more in line with what I'm looking for. And I can see it in here. I know you want to be in a committed relationship and love a woman the way that I want to be loved. If I just make these right adjustments with you and in this relationship, you'll be just like the guy that I'm looking for. Four, fantasizing about others. You have to be honest with yourself about how you feel towards a guy. And you have to be thinking, if I am with someone that I don't feel a level of attraction to, to the point where I actually fantasize about being with other people, this is an internal sign that you're probably with the wrong person. The reason this is bad for you is because if you're in a situation where you're with someone that you want to be with, but is not the person that you really end up thinking about. You're constantly gonna be in a back and forth battle internally where you really are trying to force yourself to be attracted to that person, but you're not attracted to that person. How many of you watch Love Island? A girl on Love Island is just a dating show. She was in a relationship with Rob, and then Rob kind of was like, you know what, I met a new girl, and so he went and got with her. She was real mad and real upset. She felt really hurt. She then got with the new guy. And she proceeded to say how much better this new guy is at the beginning. And yeah, I'm so much gladder to be with someone like you. They were in a little bit of a couple. And then after a couple of days, Leah goes to her girlfriends and she's like, guys, I have a problem. Now that I have him, I don't like him anymore. And they're all like this. This is how the girls react. Oh my God, because they knew it and they know what it feels like to be with a guy where you're trying to like him, but you just don't. And it just doesn't work for you down here. He was trying to cuddle her. She was literally like, uh, you know, I don't really like to cuddle. You know, I just, I feel, I feel like I just need, I just need to be in bed where we don't cuddle. In fact, if you could just not touch me at all throughout this night. And he was sitting there like, confused like what what you're doing yourself a disservice because you're constantly going to be fighting this internal battle within your mind trying to convince yourself why you should like that guy or want that guy and it also doesn't make you a bad person because a guy that you want to like this area just doesn't like him and there's a part of you that actually doesn't want to be in this relationship with this guy this is a grave mistake that i know some of you are making that is leading to some of your frustration what do you think is going to happen to you if a guy comes along in your life that stimulates this and this you're going to be very confused you're going to you're going to come to me you're going to you're going to ask in the discord you're going to say thompson i've been with the guy for four years and I, can, I love him so much and he's so amazing but this guy that i met at work oh my god the way he talks to me the way he just when he hugs me i start to tingle i start to shiver i can, i'm losing my mind and you don't want to put yourself in that position because that's a very painful position for you and the guy that you're in a relationship with and number five you are driving Let's imagine like you're in a car, you're in the driver's seat and you take your foot off the gas pedal. What happens? Nothing. The car slowly halts to a stop. And until you in the driver's seat, put your foot back on the pedal. That is the only way that the car continues to move forward in motion. If you don't do the texting, if you don't do the reaching out, if you don't do the planning and scheduling of dates, all of that stuff is what I call driving the relationship. If he is the one in the passenger seat, being a passenger princess, not doing anything, then you are driving the relationship. How are you supposed to know if that guy is actually even invested in you or this relationship? If you were to take your foot off the gas pedal, I can assure you nothing would happen for the rest of your relationship because he gets everything he wants if you're driving this relationship forward while putting in zero effort. And you have to be okay with letting it end if this man is not prepared to be doing the driving because at the end of the day, he's the man. He's the masculine energy. It's his job to be doing the driving. Let's say for the sake of argument in your relationship, he never asks you out on dates, but you really want to go out on some dinner dates and, you know, do some fun things. You're always asking him, hey, I want to go to this restaurant. Let's go to this restaurant on Thursday. Are you free on Thursday? He's like, oh, I think maybe I could do Thursday. We'll see. I'll let you know. And then when Thursday comes, you're texting him like, hey, I booked us a reservation at this restaurant. Maybe we can go at this time. Are you free at this time? 
And he's like, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess we could go. Yeah, let's do it. But at the end of the day, it ends up just being you, the one planning every single date. The only reason he doesn't do that is because he is not compelled or interested enough or motivated enough by his desire for you to do that. <laughs> See, the guys that aren't really wanting to be in their masculine energy and do the job of the man, they're going to be uncomfortable like, hey, you're making me be a man where I have to pursue you and I have to show you things and take you out on dates. Hey, I don't like that. It's 2024. I should be the girl and you should be the man. When you listen to those guys tell you all that BS and you think to yourself, well, yeah, it is 2024. Maybe I should be the one taking you out on a date. As soon as you do that, he thinks to himself, oh my God, <laughs> oh my God, she's actually so stupid that she's doing my job for me. I know this is 2024, so people will try to convince you that the best way to get a guy is to be the man instead. But I can assure you, things haven't changed. The best strategy for you is to do nothing, and you'll have a lot of good things happen. Number six, he doesn't care to keep you safe. I want you to understand first what role a man is supposed to play in your life. Number one, protector. Number two, provider. You guys always hear that. Say you guys are fighting while you're leaving the club or something like that and you're walking down the street and you're in like a really crowded place and he lets go of your hand and he is like walking away from you or going somewhere else just leaving you in this big crowd of people and he allows his emotions to take over his mind and for him to not be concerned with your safety because he's so emotional about the situation and he's really upset that's a sign that that's a man that you need to leave if he prioritizes however he feels in the moment over your safety he is not mature enough to be able to put aside his own feelings in whatever moment it is to identify what is more important to you and your relationship at that moment how he serves you in his masculine energy is not by just allowing himself to do whatever he wants whenever he wants not that he can't be emotional not that he can't feel things but there has to be a level of control and restraint that he operates with in understanding there is a time and place for me to express those emotions in a way that is appropriate. Let's say we went out to a city that we've never been to with each other. I'm going to leave you out in the middle of nowhere because I'm mad and I don't care. And when I'm mad, nothing is more important to me than me being mad. That's very dangerous for you, the woman. What are you supposed to do now if you accidentally get him mad or upset while you're in a place where you've never been before or you're in a position uh, that makes you uncomfortable if he's not there because then you're constantly on edge that, oh my God, upsetting him or if anyone ticks him off or anything ticks him off, I could literally be the one losing here because I'm in a really scary or uncomfortable, vulnerable uh, position without the man that's supposed to be helping to protect me. I'm not saying that you're not capable of doing anything, that you need a man to constantly watch over you or else you won't be able to do anything for yourself. That's not what I'm saying. You gotta be identifying, is this a guy who can be emotional, but can understand how to express his emotions in a way that's appropriate, that doesn't put me in danger. And number seven, reason that you should leave him. He's unresponsive to your discomfort natural to guys that are in relationships with women that they are in love with it is going to put him in pain emotionally if you're in discomfort because if he cares about you he's looking to try to solve and ease your discomfort by solving your situation it's the same reason why i tell you the best thing that you can do when you're upset is to just simply withdraw because natural to men when they identify that you're having some sort of issue they're going to be inclined to try to analyze or use critical thinking skills to say what is your issue and how do i solve your issue if you notice that in your relationship with him that he is unresponsive to your discomfort meaning when you withdraw or even if you were to address your discomfort in the way that he speaks to you or his lack of interest or his lack of communication and his only response to you is okay cool and he doesn't change anything he has no course of action to adjust anything that is a very clear sign you need to be walking away from that man because that means he is, does not even have any real investment in you in the first place. He's telling you without telling you that he really doesn't care that much about you or this relationship. When men are invested in a woman, they're invested in that woman's happiness to the point where it's more important to them that their woman be happy because that's the only true way that they can feel peace for themselves. So if you're letting him know, for example, hey, we haven't gone on a date in two, three months. 
We've just been texting and chatting and sending each other reels, but we never see each other. And look, like, I just can't keep doing this where we don't see each other. And his response is, damn, I'm busy. I want you to realize the truth. He doesn't care.